Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another Flint Nap and Friday. We're going to switch gears from the normal bifacing and we're going to get to showing you some working on blades and blade core type of work. So making tools for making hunting implements or for processing animals. And so I'm not a master at it, but we're making some pretty decent blades. So follow along and uh, let's show you how we do it. Hey folks, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And this is our new series, Flint Napping Friday, where we're working hard to get you where you want to be in your own flint napping journey. We're going to be breaking different rocks into different styles of points and blades and using different tools for those different jobs. And so there's going to be something for everybody and something different in every single episode. The very last thing I want to mention before we start on the project is if this is your first time with the channel or your first time flint napping, before you watch this video, I highly recommend the flint napping for beginners video, which I'll link down in the description. All right, well, we'll, we'll kind of give this a try. This isn't uh, my area of expertise. Certainly not like really true blade core stuff. Uh, you know, like in Europe, European blade core is really, really good. And it's not something that I do a lot of in general. So what I'm typically doing for blade core is the same stuff that uh, you see in the Clovis documentary we did. So still removing blades off of a core. Sometimes the core just goes this way. Sometimes it'll go all the way around. So you get different, different shaped cores. Uh, but really it's just to remove individual flakes that are really sharp like I've talked about before like we'll sometimes knock one off and uh, That really sharp edge is just perfect for you know putting into our uh, Glued in hafted knives that we use for skinning like we did in the Clovis project uh, And then you know European and Siberian kind of blade core as well where they're doing really these little micro blades and then they're taking uh, antler or bone or ivory like pin points and then uh, grooving them and then setting little blades in along those as projectile points so there's there's some different types of blade core around and again this is not my area of expertise per se but I'll show you at least what I know and so you can tinker around with it and uh, a person to really watch that's good at that is uh, Peter Wicking or Wiking W-I-K-I-N-G you can find him on Instagram, so I recently kind of discovered uh, Peter on there. And you want to talk about somebody that's really, really good at uh, blade core and then also doing stuff like square axe blades and stuff like that. He's, he's one you should definitely check out. And I'm going to start this just by removing some of this that's undercut because if you're just going to try to run this blade, it's just going to hinge right here. So I'm going to try just using percussion to remove some of that and clean it up. So, uh, anyway, too, I think that I've been asked here kind of lately about selling just whole nodules of Georgetown. Maybe not great big stuff that's hard to get into a box. Because normally, all the stuff that we run on the website is, you know, it's all flaked over pieces or just, you know, flaked off for making arrowheads and whatnot. But I've had several people recently asking for uh, larger pieces to either blade core with or because they want to spall it themselves. So you might notice some stuff this size popping up on the Hunt Primitive website. So if you've been asking, I guess check it out. Maybe you'll see. See how that I was trying to remove some of this, but <clears throat> that's exactly what I was worried was going to happen, that they were going to come in and stop and that's a tough that's a tough angle especially with it <clears throat> being undercut the way that it is so I'm just gonna kind of reface and get a whole new angle to work with and what I really am looking for I think I just made it worse actually yep all right well I decided to just start off with a new one because I got a bad, bad start on that first one, so I'm still, I'm still kind of learning here alongside you, so sometimes if one just doesn't want to work with you, it's best to uh, 
go ahead and pull it and start on one that maybe will. So to start right with the punch on on this piece and see if we can't kind of work around or remove some flakes and then I'll I'll be able to explain a little bit at least my thought process and what I'm up to. But give me a minute to find my my sea legs again on There we go. All right. So now that outside edge with that cortex, oddly enough, it's still pretty sharp because Georgetown cortex is pretty good, but that would just be your first starter flake. Not one, you could still probably use some tool scrape, you know, you could scrape stuff with it. It's sharp for that. But, all right, now I'm gonna take, there's like a little, little nippy thing right there. Instead of using that as my direct platform, I'm actually gonna beat that platform back so I can hit it here next. So I'm just gonna take a couple, a couple little chip flakes like that so I can set it up. Here we go. All right, see, so we're just kind of setting it up, but we're able to run these nice long flakes. So again, that one's kind of along the same line. Ah, this is a, this is a good point to, to mention here, whether you use your, this rock, very important. I didn't show this in the Clovis project, and I should have. And that is when you have pieces like this that have that extra blade on there that you don't want, what I typically do is line it out wherever I want it, like this on my hammer stone, and just shear off till I get the blades that I want. So I sheared that one back a little bit too far, but I just hammer like an anvil it. So now I've got, you know, that very specific blade. And then that's those bend break tools also. So you'll we'll do a couple more of these as we make through them, right? So that's when you start seeing these bend and break tools and actually the same process with the blade core and then bend breaking uh, except using more modern tools is how they use or uh, how they make uh, the flints for flint locks okay so that's kind of what we're after so let's see what else we can get now so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna jump ahead over to here. So we just remove these two flakes and they're nice and we got a good start. Uh, I don't wanna continue to remove flakes here because they're not gonna wanna release because this is so high. And we also have a kind of a bad angle over here. So I think I'm gonna start back here and remove and then I'll work up until maybe I can take one out of here. We'll see, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure if I'll get this one to go or not. It's kind of a wrong angle to be hitting. You know what, maybe I'll try it like this. Uh, this one I'll get to go. Little piece. Yeah, watch your fingers too. Okay, I think I will have to just kind of work my way around. Okay, there we go. So that's another really nice sharp edge along this one. So we'll, uh, we're gonna work on trying to get those really nice long flakes like um, like Peter does. I don't, I don't know that we're gonna quite get there. I think that takes a lot, a lot of practice. But setting up the core to be able to do those is really really important as well because you can't remove those long flakes if you've got these little pieces jetting out and I really want to get that off of there but I don't I don't think this angle is gonna let me do it yeah we'll get a little piece so that's that's a start better than it was That one just doesn't want to go. Here we go. There I got it. All right, let me clean that off quick. 
then I'll show you how. So we've kind of rounded this out now, right? So that was that spot. Still not perfect, but at least we got rid of that piece that was sticking out. So we're starting to get a little bit of a better face that maybe we can remove some really nice blades. So let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna work over here, probably develop one. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough with this cortex, so what I might do is actually try this ridge right here. I, I think it's a really good ridge and I almost want to save it to try to get some really nice flakes. But I'm worried if I do it here that I might hit this little pocket and step fracture it, which I certainly don't want to do. So I don't know, that's a tough, tough one. I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. There we go. That's a perfect little little bladelet piece, right? Okay, set that one aside. Little tiny blade. All right, now I'll walk over, and I gotta kind of dull that. Okay, I'll show you show you at least what I'm looking at here. See is see how it's starting to scoop. It's starting to concave on me a little bit. If you keep driving into that, eventually it's going to con keep concaving more and more, and then that's where it's going to stop, and it's going to step fracture right, like right across. So I have other cores behind me that have done that. Let me this one I really worked this one down a while back for the Clovis project. Okay, so this is the core, and you can see where it starts to undercut, and then it starts to step fracture, and then they stop coming off clean. So that again, that's just me needing to get better and taking some of the curvature out of these blades, but I'm still still learning. All right, so what we're gonna do then is because we have to start taking some of that curvature out, I think we just need to take little blades. Oops, that was a little too much. In fact, I can probably grab on and get a decent one here now. Um, maybe. Trying to get rid of some of that undercutting. Yep, I was worried that that was going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. So, now I'll have a new problem to work through. I was really, it's just got this little dip and I was really worried that we would hit that especially with that undercutting and that's exactly what it was so I guess if I can call it then I need to start figuring out how to fix it so let's see if we can't get a decent one here I'm gonna rotate my tool around till I find the edge that I want to bite okay so there's a nice long blade not a not honestly a very beautiful one but it's got a lot of use nice usable sharp edges but I wanted to remove that big massive piece so maybe I had another chance to drive past this. And in fact, I may continue to work over to this side to try to get away from this big ugly step fracture. But I still got all this trash to deal with too. Okay, clean that up a little bit. This is gonna be, have to be a big one if it comes off, I'm afraid. If we can get it, it's big. Um, I mean, I'm looking at trying to remove a huge piece of this face. So I think I may need to come back to this side and hope I can get enough to drive past that. So I'm going to nip that little tip off. A couple little blades. All right, here's to hoping. Got lucky and drove right through it. It didn't clean it all up, but we did get through it. So now we're gonna try to make that mess all over again. Try to remove a big, big blade here. There we got it. All right. So we got that one. Clean that spot up. Okay, so now that opens up. <clears throat> See how we got it's starting to make this new ridge to remove that next new blade. I'm going to kind of dull that uh, 
that surface up just a little bit take some of that that concavity out of it <laughs> got a twofer out of that one but that's kind of what I was looking for there that would have been okay if you were putting those on the grooved uh, antler pieces but that's a, a good little skidding flake that we can mount that right into one of our um, glued in knives like we did on the Clovis project a good little blade for that all right so now I'm gonna come back and now that I've released some of those flakes this is that really big one I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it I was talking about let's try that then Boy, it does not want to go and it's bashing my fingers up now yeah that is a tough tough spot to try to work this but I really wish I had that one off half tempted to I'm worried about messing it up because I don't do super well with percussion on these ones all right well we didn't get all of it, but we at least knocked some out. Didn't help us any here, though. We still have this weird spot going on that I just don't like. Alright, we'll just have to try to work through it. I know if I keep hitting it with the hammer stone though it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna keep getting better at this point I can tell you that much see that gouged in really far right here so if we go try now because of hitting that with that hammer stone to try to clean the spot off I wish we could get more of this but there's just no platform up here so we just I guess slowly keep working it around until we get it but I know if I go trying to take this one now there's a good chance it won't travel because it's going to hit this area that's concave and then also we got this step down here which like I said I'm still just trying to figure it all out I mean we'll get some good blades out of it but so I'm going to take some of that edge out that's good now I'll go ahead and work on this actually I need to straighten it out because otherwise I don't think our blade's going to come out where I need it to all right, we'll try it now. There we go. Still not getting them really, really beautiful, but I think like anything, it just takes a tremendous amount of practice. I mean, it was certainly a point that I couldn't even drive blades. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try to just get there we go some of this cleaned up now we're talking okay so the hammer stone definitely helped give us some uh, some better platforms and I guess I'll keep working it around I'll there's another blade to be had here so we'll try to remove this one and maybe that'll open up to get another one on this side I think I'll zoom you guys in just a little bit more as well and hopefully I can get Get you on. I don't get it off camera too much. There we go. We're starting to get a little bit better now, huh? All right, that's pretty nice. <clears throat> We're getting there. So we'll work it around. I'll tell you what else I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swing you guys completely around and reset this camera up. I want you to see it kind of from this top angle for a little bit. Now let's try it like this for a second and see if if you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Right, I'm gonna keep rotating this around till I find I've really got it flat in here now because I've re removed that that last nice blade. I'd like to get through some of this trash yet, and then this blade here is still that's probably our best bet now to finally try to get a hold of this one and run this ridge. But I'm worried again about this little pocket. So I just, I was going to have to take a, I can't take a thin bite, I'll have to take a bigger bite off of this. And then hope. Okay, that worked, we got it. That's 
still just like a fortuitous break tool. It's not a perfect blade, but it would certainly still still do a job. Let's continue that around, I think, one, maybe one more. I'm going to clean this. You can see how it, um, it undercuts, but it's kind of off to the side. So I'm going to nip this off to develop that platform. But, man, I got a lot of stuff here. I'm going to try to take another good good size piece out of there to set up but I'm going to get rid of some of that no oh, I thought I had it that time but I did not all right there we go there's a little little edge there we can use but most of it's cortex so that one's not very nice overall but all right, so see, at least we're starting to get a little bit more face exposed now. And we are running these out. We're terminating them out to the bottom, so they're not they're not hinging on us. That's the only one that was. So I think we're we're well on the way of developing this. And of course, you know, I think it's in, we talk about blades and cores. For whatever reason, I don't know why people sometimes think that the core is the like the end result, like you're trying to make this beautiful core. I mean, really, we're just, we're trying to make blades to use. I, I, I would I hope that that's what we're trying to understand, that we're actually removing tools off of the core. But I'm not going to lie that when the cores are all basically spalled off or they're all bladed off, the cores do look pretty darn cool. But that's not, uh, that's not much of a usable tool, that core. Let's see if we can't take a, this big big honking section off of this side. Just like that. Perfect. All right. So that's still even a, a decent little scraping tool, even though it's kind of ugly, but that, that was that other face that was pretty bad. So now we've got this one here. I think we're gonna be able to run a nice blade, but because our platform is kind of off to that side, I'm just going to go ahead and nip just nipping that platform back a little bit taking some of that undercut out of it and now we've got this nice platform right there there we go there's a nice blade huh all right See, we're, we're learning, we're getting better and better, and then same thing, so it's it's to where, now this platform's actually broke kind of back, so we gotta be a little bit cautious about that, but we need to nip that little piece off right there, which actually developed that platform for us just a little bit better. And so I think we're good for one more. That's a great little blade right there. So that's a, a very nice cutting edge blade. And then it's also got a little bit steep wrangle on this side that once the cutting side is depleted, this would make a really nice push scraper. Okay. So that's what we're kind of, you can still see. Haven't made any mistakes yet. We haven't been able to work through. Uh, this part right here, you can see it's, it's undercut heavily so it's important we don't want to drive through that we got to nip those edges off it's kind of like kind of like a braiding but on a larger scale okay and we'll back it up to here and see if we can't drive one more here we go that's a nice blade right there and we'll keep working around this trashy spot too. I'm gonna nip this this spot kind of curls around here at the top. You can see, I think. So I need to nip that back just a little bit, about like that. And actually, this you know same thing here. If we were gonna hit that platform, we'd want to nip nip those. That one's not too bad. I think we've got a really nice blade that's set up here. This will be a really nice blade set up here. I'm gonna see, I'm really gonna see if I can drive through and get this spot cleaned up a little bit better so we've got more face to work with. It cleaned it a little, but not a lot, and it really crushed our, 
our edge right there. But that's okay. Because like I said, my end result isn't to make a beautiful core. It's to get as many really good usable tools out of this that I can. And we've got a very good start on that. All right, we'll try it this way as spell. So now you can see maybe if my hands or my swinging arm's not gonna block as much. Just trying to give you as many different looks as I can. If I could, if I could have that camera directly down over top of it, I think you would see a little bit better. But I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that with this camera. I'd have to have somebody else. Um, all right, so I'm gonna clean up those little nipped edges right there or I'm going to nip those little edges, those little undercuts. It's not too bad. Whoop, got a little tiny one that wasn't what I wanted, so I'll re relook and redress. I'm just rotating that punch around until I get really the, the mate on it that I'm looking for. I may even want to sharpen my punch at some point. Oh, I broke that one. We had a nice, nice blade going, and it terminated right there at the base on us, which I'm not, not stoked about. But it's not the end of the world. But yeah, we snapped that one. That would have been a nice, nice little blade. It's still a, a decent little tool if you needed it. All right, maybe I'll have to. Hopefully, we can actually cut through that the rest of the way now. There's a very, very nice cutting blade there. That was a big one. We were trying to take that big one to cut through this, and it actually just went along the side. So now we've actually, now what we've got is ourselves into a problem where we had a really nice face going to take nice blades off of, and then because I made a mistake or a couple of mistakes. I had to take another big ones, which basically eliminated our really nice face and left me with a whole bunch of little trashy stuff to try to clean up. This is where I typically start falling these things apart, is if I can't, once it starts cupping down here for me, this is where I kind of lose it. So, um, we're going to keep keep going and keep trying, but it's getting getting tough for me. I'm try to remove another pretty big one here. Did it go? Did it go? Oh, got a great blade, but it's stopping right there. Same spot. Another great blade. So, I mean, I've still got a lot of nice blades out of this, which I'll show you here in a little bit when it's done. And we probably won't keep you too much longer once I start kind of messing this up. I can't wait to look back on this in however many years like I do some of my older napping videos and be able to kind of laugh at myself that I was doing that. See, there's another absolutely gorgeous blade. This is actually, this is going to go perfect into um, one of those knives that I'm holding it like this. It's going to go perfect into that one for our next, uh, one of our next bison projects. But I'm sure enough just blowing this up right here. I'm hoping that maybe if I keep going it'll create a platform and I can drive it off this way somewhere but <clears throat> and nip this little edge off I just don't think I'm gonna be able to drive down through I really want to get this off but you can see it's already crushed right there I just don't I don't know that we're gonna get it so I'm gonna walk it back up just a little bit oh we got a piece of it Broke it, broke that, but there's still a little, little bit of a tool there. Nothing perfect, but yeah, we actually we did work through some of it, and it actually did open us up this platform. We get this a little bit more, I may be able to come in and remove that. So hope's not lost yet. Go ahead and nip some of this out. Getting tough though. It's getting really tough. Especially over here. Okay, we cleaned a little bit of it up. There's a nice little, wasn't a, a full long blade, but we're 
I'm not trying to make one either. I'm trying to just clean this up, which I did. So we're just kind of walking this around. But see how we're redefining this face now. We're getting getting back to somewhere, somewhere good. We can do it without messing them up again. Uh, I thought we were gonna have a good one there, and it went and stopped. It didn't. It didn't blow it up, but it it didn't work out beautiful either. So now it's fine. I think we've cleaned this face up about as far as we're gonna be able to clean it up. Boy, it'd be nice if I could knock that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this angle. No, not yet. Maybe if we remove this one more blade, maybe it'll define that enough. I don't know. I'm gonna chip. See, we get a lot of undercuttings right here. We'll go just a little bit more, and I'll show you. I'll lay out some of the blades for you to see. Mm. That's a little micro blade. That wasn't the intent. I expected a little bigger bite than that, but. And you can see what the top's starting to look like. I mean, we're getting a good rounded face, but we're definitely getting the undercutting again. And then, of course, the undercutting down here. So I can't continue to drive flakes down into that. Until we knock some of this undercutting back. Another nice blade, really a really nice blade there, but again, it's still stopping right here. But once we, I think once we get to a point, we're either going to get lucky and knock through it, or I'm going to be able to get a platform and remove it from the bottom. But we're still getting good blades, so that's the important part. We're getting the tools that we need for either woodworking or animal working. So we've got a little bit of undercut going here, so I'm going to try to take a couple short... Uh-oh. That was, I should have, I should have just, instead of hitting it there to develop it, because now I made a problem. That's, that's a tough one. I should have, in hindsight, just gone and got a bigger bite and tried to take the whole bite out, because now I've really got myself into a pickle there. So that's not good. Can't get that one to let go. There it is. All right, so that was just a cleanup. So at least now we're working on this face, which is getting us closer to maybe being able to take out this last mistake I just made. So I need to get a bigger bite. So because I need a bigger bite, I gotta clean some of that up. That was perfect. I gotta nip that little piece off. And I need a big bite to try to remove that big eyesore I just made. And I don't know if I got a big enough <laughs> bite on this, but we're gonna try Nope, I ran it tried to get a big one and it ran right into it. So I think that might be the end of it for us if I can't If I can't rally and fix that mistake So instead of continuing to try to force through it We'll work back and we're gonna try to remove one more good usable flake. Maybe one back here Another very nice tooling flake. wasn't wasn't a nice, pretty long one, but it's still usable. But again, stopping right there. We'll just continue around. Try to get this more cortex off. Okay, there there we go. Okay, so that's still a, a usable fortuitous break piece. So there you go. That's another where we wouldn't need this end here. So you could find a spot to anvil it but that's not a good spot but let's just say if we wanted to use that when I said I would show you a little bit more of that where I'll take my uh, hammer stone and find a spot that it hangs over just hit the blade where I want it and then I can knock that off so there we're now we're right back into another one of those perfect skinning blades and those tools 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I do this, then you haven't watched the Clovis video. It's a stick, basically. They're behind me. I just don't want to get back up. But essentially, there's a, a groove cut in. They're a longer handle. But they'll sit on it. That'd be like that. But made out of wood. So if there was a groove cut in, it glues in with pine pitch glue. And so then you've got a knife right in here. I'm not even showing it to you. So cut a groove in, and then it glues into that. And then that creates a handle uh, that we can use for skinning. And very, very effective as we come, came to find out in the Clovis project. All right, so we'll go just a little bit further here for you because I do want to see if I can get more of this cleaned up and fix those spots. And we fix those spots and at least maybe I've shown you how to troubleshoot out of them because that's what we're here for it is to is to learn, not just watch me make beautiful flakes. You want to see how we mess up and then how we fix it. All right, so this piece here, I'm going to go ahead and, and I think I can probably pop that off. At least we're going to try. It might be a mistake, but here it is. Got it. Okay, so I'm going to come down a little bit further. Oh, that's why you clean your pad. Just jam my finger down on that. And then I'll clean that bottom up. All right, so we got we got that that whole spot cleaned up. So now we just have this one. Now, if we get a, a good enough bite, I think we're going to be okay. We can because we've really isolated this now. You know what I mean? So it just means I'm going to have to get a really big bite that wants to travel. So we're going to try it and see what happens. Some sharp edges there, and let's hope it doesn't stop. But I'm going to come back and try to get a really nice chunk did we get it we got it we got it all right so we just blew that whole piece off now there's a little tiny little piece of trash right there you can see but we got through it and we made a nice new ridge for a new blade okay now this is really well established but it's going to take another really big bite to get this nasty spot out so let's nip that clean just a little bit. Oh, that's much better. That definitely took the concavity out of it. And let's try. Let's hope we can get through that. We did. We got it. All right. Cleaned it up. I don't need that one. But there we go. So we solved, solved all of our problems. And we're back into another nice core just to remove nice flakes. So, of course, the next one, we're going to remove that little bit of undercutting. There's a little bit more I'd like to get out if I can. I don't think I can go back too much further without actually making the undercutting worse. Okay. There we go. Back to another nice blade. <clears throat> okay, come up here. That's got a lot of curl into it. It's not ideal. That's another one. We'll anvil that one and break this whole section off. We break that whole section off on the anvil and we'll have uh, another really nice blade. Okay. See, and then, you know, you can continue to work all the way around these cores as well. And, you know, ideally when you're all said and done, you're going to end with, with uh, you know, a nice round, like a nice prismatic style of core. But, like I said, my job or my intentions here are not really to make a beautiful core. I just want the best toolage I can get off of it. I almost messed that one up. A little bit of a goof up. We didn't follow it. It's a nice little blade. I just didn't get it to travel the whole way. I was a little bit worried about my angle on that one. We have to take a little bigger bite now. Mm, boy, there's a sharp spot right there. That is... 
that's an ugly spot to hang on to. It dug into my palm a little bit. There we got it. We cleaned that back up and got a nice little blade out of it. See? Very nice. All right, I think I have gone and really shown what we're up to. Now we're just on autopilot. We're just continuing to do the same stuff, but I think I worked through the problems. I'll take one more here. It is addicting. See, we're continuing to walk that face around. So again, there's another one. We'll anvil that one off as well. Remember that? So we'll pop that up, find where it overhangs. It's not the most ideal setup. There we go. See, I just chop that end. Nice blade for cutting. There, there's my hand bleeding from just a little one. Where I, all that was was just grabbing that sharp end of that core. But all right, there you go. So hopefully uh, that helps you better understand the blade core that we're after and all those usable tools. And if you haven't watched the Clovis project. I think you'd really, really enjoy that. And then seeing these in use, especially uh, for building all of our Clovis hunting implements as well as breaking down the bison that we spear. And kind of find a new platform on this. And I can pop a new blade off just like that. So this is a whole toolbox within itself. So that right there, here, somebody use that blade for something. I'll take it. So now this that's the I'm benefit the of the blade core yeah, yeah, technology yeah. is as a blade gets depleted, like yes, you can actually rework the edge if you like it, but that might be a saw. That might be what we have shown at a different time where we're able to take uh, our spear shafts and then we turn some of these exhausted uh, blade edges that we just popped off that they're skinning with yeah, and then chip blade. the edge and use it as a saw to cut in notches for knife handles or even cut antler to size where you just find a piece of antler you cut it and break it off score it all the way around so those these tools really get run to exhaustion but those single edge blade tools are somewhat valuable especially for simple initial uh, uh, simple initial right incision flakes you would pull 